What's up guys, Nepenthes here and welcome back to another episode of the best team in FIFA. Today we've got a 15k team sent in from Harrison MC 123 uh, I haven't done like a super, super cheap team in a long time and I think there are some amazing, very cheap teams out there. And uh, I'm intrigued to get a couple of cheap teams on the channel just for people that want to save their coins for team of the season and then just use something in the meantime. So uh, we're going to be building a cheap team today. Now first and foremost, if you could drop a thumbs up on the video, it would be much appreciated. And of course, if you guys want to submit your team to the best team in FIFA, go to reddit.com slash r slash tbtif and you can submit your team, uh, any substitutes, player instructions, custom tactics, chem styles, so on and so forth. So we're in a 4-3-2-1 today. Uh, but, you know, there's a, there's a handful of super meta popular formations right now. The 4-3-2-1, the 4-2-3-1 narrow, the 4-1-2-1-2 narrow, and the 4-3-1-2 of quite effective formations. Uh, and today we're, we're here with the 4-3-2-1. And I made sure to pick a team today that doesn't have your traditional Bailly, Smalling, Walker, etc, etc. So we've got a bit of a different team. And we're going to start with... The goalkeeper. Um, I've already made all the changes to tactics and, and chemistry styles. And once again, we've actually got a goalkeeper where no chem style was purposely put on. And I don't understand that. I, I don't understand the, the mentality behind not diverting the stats to the three key areas. We spoke about it before. In my opinion, goalkeepers have four stats that are important. Diving, handling, reflexes and positioning. Uh, speed and kicking just don't seem that relevant. And we've got trapping goal here. Now, for an 83-rated goalkeeper, he actually has very poor stats. 79 handling, 79 kicking, 80 for positioning. He's diving super low. He's got an 83-rated card and only one stat higher than 83 on the card in 85 reflexes. But this is the best team in FIFA where I'm trying to find out your teams and see if they work. This isn't about what I want and what I think is popular or what I think should happen. It's about what you guys want. So we have trapping goal. Uh, in at right back, we have Ricardo Pereira. Um, this team altogether, according to Footbin right now, is 14,700 coins on Xbox and 16,700 coins on PlayStation. So we have Pereira as one centre-back. We have Yanga and Biwa as... Uh, sorry, Pereira as the right back, not as a centre-back. Yanga and Biwa... As one of our centre-backs, and then we have ourselves Jonathan Tarr as uh, another centre-back. This is the upgraded version of Tarr. Um, so if you have the 79-rated version, it's not... I mean, he's got four extra defending, one extra passing, everything else is identical. So I guess in that sense, it doesn't really make that much difference. And then at left-back, we've got Wendell. Um, the reason why I was happy to use this defence is because it's... Like, this is called a cheap OP team, and, and there are only a certain amount of cheap players that you can get. Now, Wendell's actually got a nice card. My, uh, my the, the guy that sent it in, he's opted for anchor chemistry styles on all four defenders. Not my first choice. And again, this is where, hopefully, series like this can either take teams and teach me something to, in turn, teach you something. Or could potentially take teams that people think are good, and then we can turn them into even better teams. But Pereira, with 86 pace... His defending and physical is horrendous um, for a defender. His defending is actually not bad for a right back, but his physical is not good. Um, he's got high, high work pace and a four-star weak foot, which is quite nice, and he's got good pace. I would personally give him either Shadow or Sentinel. Um, I would go with Shadow to just boost that pace and defending and make him super quick because his physical is so low anyway that an anchor is not really doing much for that physicality. Or I'd give him Sentinel because he's got decent pace and to boost that physical massively might be quite nice. Um, we've then got Yang and Biwa, of course, medium, medium, six foot tall. Again, not ideal here, but it's not about, like, so if somebody says to me, this is what I think the best team in FIFA is, I can't just dismiss it without playing with it, right? I've got to actually take on board why they might think it's the best team in FIFA. Yang and Biwa's got an all right card. Uh, Anka, uh, maybe, maybe the right thing with Anka. I'd have to have a look at his in-game stats to see where the physical stats are applied. But with a shadow, he'd be a beast. With an anchor, I'm sure he'd still be very good as well. But medium, medium work rates, I've not enjoyed over time in FIFA. And six foot tall, not the best for a centre-back. You want at least kind of 6'2", six, 6'3". Six, and then for Tar, very much the same. In fact, if you compare the stats of the two, they're, they're near identical. Tar has one more defending and one less physical the same pace, the same work rates. He's just a lot taller, which I do enjoy a bit more. But again, I'm... I'm 
unsure about those medium medium work rates it'll be interesting to me to test it out and then Wendell at left back high medium work rates five foot nine I think anchor is perfect for him again it'll be a situation where I might go sentinel um, just to boost the defending and the physical and accept the fact that 86 pace is going to be good enough um, but if you love those extra pace boosts then yeah anchor maybe shadow would be ideal but an interesting defense there guys and then for the player instructions as per usual just stay back while attacking on all four pieces not that they seem to actually follow the trend of the player instructions anyway so the defense is there into the midfield guys and we've got a player that I've never ever used in FIFA before so interested to use him and it is Cyprien uh, Wieland Cyprien, the upgraded version to a, a 78 rated card. The second midfielder that we're going to be taking a look at is going to be Tolisso. And this again is the upgraded version. And Tolisso I think is going to be an important part to this, uh, to this whole team. And then the third and final midfielder is going to be Renato Sanchez. Um, so the midfield, now this is called an OP team. And you look at these players and on first glance, they look good. There is huge problems with this team though. First and foremost, the physicals on all the defenders, none of them have above 80. Uh, and then in the midfield, my, my the, the guy that sent the team in has opted for an engine chemistry style on all three midfielders. I'm, I'm a big fan of the engine chemistry style, but on attacking minded midfielders, because I think the pace and the dribbling is important for big players like Harry Kane and Costa that I use in midfield rather than on players like Tolisso, Cyprien and Renato Sanchez, who are so well-rounded that the engine is actually a little bit of a waste, in my opinion. So we've got Cyprien there, 5'11 high medium. I would honestly either give him something like a Hunter chemistry style to boost that shooting and pace if he's going to be your attacking-minded midfielder, or a shadow chemistry style, because even though he has high attacking work rate, Giving him the boost in pace and defending just makes his card very, very strong. Now, he's 5'11 with 80 physical, which isn't bad, but it's not ideal. And he's 3-star, three 3-star. Three and then Tolisso, again, another 5'11, high, high work rates. Again, he's gone for engine. I would 100% put shadow or anchor on Tolisso. Um, and then for Renato Sanchez as well, I would go for shadow on Renato Sanchez and make these three incredibly well-defensive-minded midfielders. Now, one of the biggest problems, again, that we've got with this midfield could be, and again, this is why I was intrigued to test out this midfield and test, test out this team, because I've not used this team before, so I couldn't necessarily say one way or another whether it'd be good or bad. But um, we've got two high, high work rates and one high, medium work rate. So it's a very offensive-minded midfield that has very poor stats attacking-wise. Um, you know, we've got 72 shooting, not boosted. 75 shooting not boosted and 74 shooting not boosted. 80 dribbling, 75 dribbling and 79 dribbling that are boosted marginally doesn't really help. Um, so I, I would personally go with Shadow on all three of these uh, centre midfielders. Um, another thing that's lacking in this midfield is there's no height. You know, there's not a single midfielder over six foot tall. Um, there's no defensive capabilities because of the way the chem styles are initiated. And there is no four star skiller. Nor is there a four-star weak foot. We've got three-star, 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 and three... Oh, sorry, four-star, three-star. So we have one four-star weak foot in Renato Sanchez, but no four-star skillers, which I think is a big miss. And the other thing that I noticed all the way up to the midfield is there is a distinct lack of set-piece takers. Uh, I checked the in-game stats for some of these players, and they don't have very good free kicks. Now, for the midfield, everything is the same, except for the central centre midfielder is set to get forwards. I don't necessarily think that this is the correct way to do it either. I, what I would do is, if you're going to set the centre midfielder to get forward, I would personally put the Cyprian in centre midfield because he's got high and medium work rates and then the other two can just use their work rates. But um, in my opinion, in my experience, setting them to stay back while attacking would be far more uh, beneficial and putting shadow cards on them. But as I say, you know... Um, who is it? Harrison says uh, he says he has a similar stay, play style to me. He found this team not only successful but enjoyable and fun to use. I've used very expensive teams in the past, but this team outperforms them by far. On the bench, I have Doombia, Emre Chan, and El Shirawi, which obviously I have on the bench too. He didn't put any chem styles or anything for those dudes. Now for the attack, it's it's pretty uh, pretty obvious where we're going in some senses, especially due to the fact that this is a cheap team. This is a 15k team, and we've got Kingsley Coleman in at the left forward spot. We have got ourselves an interesting Jeremy Menez in at the uh, in at the striker spot, and this was again this was an interesting pick for me. And then we've got the upgraded Dembele, um, uh, Usman Dembele, the upgraded version of Usman Dembele in at the right forward slot. Now this attack was again very intriguing because first and foremost it's so bad with physicals. 
Uh, you know, 56 on Dembele, 58 on Menez, 58 on Coman, and again with height, 5'10 four-star skill moves, 5'11 four-star, four-star, and then 5'10 five-star, four-star. So in terms of skill moves, you're fine. In terms of weak foot, it's not bad. Uh, we've got a three-star weak foot here, a four-star weak foot on Menez, and a five-star weak foot on Dembele. But look at the work rates as well. Medium low on Coman. Medium low on uh, Menez and high medium on Dembele. It's not work rates that you would associate with a team playing well. Uh, it's a very short team, a very small team. A very it's, It doesn't have a lot of physical prowess in this team. In fact, the whole team from back to front is really lacking in physical. The only really notable player for physicality is Renato Sanchez. And at 5'9", that, you know, if you come up against a big midfield, like a tall midfielder or, you know, a strong midfielder like a Matic or something... Sanchez isn't really going to be able to compete, but like I say, this team intrigued me because it's a lot of players that I wouldn't use and a lot of chem styles that I wouldn't use. And for that reason, I was like, okay, let's see how it goes. Let's see how it plays. Um, so I've got for player instructions for the attackers, it's literally just getting behind for Coman. Everything's the same for Menez and getting behind for Dembele. And then this, guys, is the team. The custom tactics, there were no, nothing defined, so I left them default and just put offside trap to cover instead. This is the team. Let's get into the gameplay. Okay, guys, into the gameplay we go. And the first opponent we come up against is a 4-3-1-2, 187 team. Oh, man. Oh, man. Uh, it turns out he's actually a viewer and a subscriber. And it seems like he gets high uh, elite finishes every week in foot champs. He's got an incredible team. And this was going to be in game number one. It was going to be a true test of how this team would fare uh, against this kind of team. Now, this is, this is an anomaly. Right, This is an anomaly because you don't come up against this team all the time in Division 1. And less so do you come up against this team that is then controlled by a very good player in Division 1. You might come up against this kind of team but come up against quite a distinctly average player. Uh, in which case it would be more of a fairer game. Um, I tried my absolute best in this game but it exposed a lot of huge flaws within this team that made me immediately understand the fact that this team was not good. Uh, it wasn't bad. Let's let's say that. Let let me you know. I'll say to um, Harrison, it's not a bad team. And and if you're taking this team into like daily knockouts, sure, you'll probably have a lot of fun with it. You know, it's a it's a competent team in that sense, especially due to the caliber of player you come up against in a daily knockout. But if you take this team into specifically Division One, but any of the high divisions, um, you're gonna have a bad time. And some of the fears that I had when building the team were very much real when playing with the team. And one of the biggest fears that I had was that there was a distinct lack of physicality within this team. And that was so noticeable. My opponent here brought on 93 rated Red Lewandowski. He had George Weah, he had Emmanuel Petit, Paul Pogba Vidal. He had a powerhouse team and he just bullied me. Uh, you could see by the match stats at half time, I was actually controlling the game at half time. I had 59% possession, three shots, three on target. My opponent literally just had two shots, two on target, and it was 2 0 up. And at that point, the game was over. You know, I had to go attacking to try and get back into the game. I was never going to get back into it at 2 0 down like that. And uh, you could see here from, from the goals, his, his big, powerful strikers just absolutely run away from my defenders. And that's because this defense, although Tar is six foot four, also has absolutely no physicality. It's crazy. Um, I would like to know, Harrison, if you're watching the video, dude, what, where do you use this team? In what game mode within FIFA do you use this team? Because in Division 1, this is not a good team. Um, some of the good things about this team was the creation was great. I created a lot of chances. I played four games in Division 1. I won two of them. I got slapped in this game and I lost one game 3-2 very narrowly. Uh, in a game where I, I probably should have won. But one of the biggest issues is that the chance creation in this team is great. But the finishing ability in this team is horrendous. And we we go back now to chem styles and player choices. And when you look at someone like Dembele, he has 73 shooting. Menez has 77 shooting and Coman has 76 shooting. When you then compare that to the midfielders, they have 74, 75 and 72. 
The midfielders have nearly the same shooting stats as the attackers, which is never a good thing because your attackers are supposed to be the dudes that get you the goals. Now, of course, the way those stats are derived could be different. You know, the, the, like the difference between the 76 shooting of Coleman and the 75 shooting of Tolisso could be huge because Tolisso might have really high volleys and really high penalties. Um, and then really bad finishing and really bad shot power or something. Whereas it could be the opposite for Menez. But I tell you something. I created a lot of chances in all four games with these with this team. And I struggled to score those chances just because of how bad they were. Um, uh, you know, if you're going to take players with this low finishing ability. You have got to apply a chemistry style that boosts that finishing to the max. Whether it be Hunter, Sniper or... What's the other one? The one that boosts uh, physical and shooting instead of uh, dribbling and shooting. I personally would go with Sniper on all three attackers. They all, like Dembele and Komen more specifically, I would go with Sniper because they've already got incredible pace. And when you're giving them a Hawk, you're boosting their finishing minimally and you're boosting their already horrendous physical levels minimally to the point where it's wasted stats. The other problem with this team was the stamina levels of all the players bar Renato Sanchez was disgraceful. Taliso was dead by half time every game and the attack was uh, was just dead as well. I didn't even make the subs because there was no it was unnecessary to do so uh, in my opinion. But you know, you when you've got the low stamina levels of Dembele, Menez and Coman and the fact that they're weak, the, uh, well, they just they got ruined. They got absolutely ruined. I, I managed to score some goals with them, but it wasn't fun. So I will say in terms of a cheap team, this is not the best team in FIFA, not by a long shot. I, I wouldn't recommend it as a team, in fact. You know, I, I gave it a shot because there were a lot of positive things that I liked about how this team looked. But there, there were a few concerns I had. But what I wanted to do was take a team that I was unsure of because that's, that's how you find the, 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 the unknowns. You know what I mean? Like I might have played with this team. It might have turned out to be one of the best teams I'd ever used for whatever reason. The team might have just gelled. But there are so many uh, characteristics missing. You're missing a tanky midfielder, a tanky attacker, be it a winger or a striker. You're missing uh, work rates for defenders. You're missing physicality in all your defence. You're missing a set piece taker, which, believe it or not, is quite an important thing to have in the meta of FIFA that we're in right now. You've got like four or five key characteristics missing in the team. And then on top of that, the fact that you're missing some positives, you also have quite a lot of negatives with the very, very weak. It's a, it is a very weak team, a very small team. You know, there's only one player in the whole team that's over six foot and one player that is six foot outside of the goalkeeper. Um, so that that's not good enough in itself. You're not going to win any set pieces. You're not going to win any goal kicks or anything like that. And then you also, you've also got, like, not only is it a short team, it's just a very, very weak team with very low stamina across the board. Um, so I would say, again, th this team is not far off of being a nice team. You know, there's a few changes that you can make. Like, I would swap out Jeremy Menez for any French striker that's quite big and will do well. I, I think, is I, I don't know exactly what Modeste is like, but Modeste would be a good option. Um, I would swap one of the midfielders where possible for a four-star midfielder. Maybe Renato Sanchez for Thiago uh, and get that five-star skiller in and someone that's going to have good set pieces. Uh, again, Thiago, low stamina level is one of the reasons why I don't particularly like him. But, that, you know, that could be a good option. Um, and I would definitely change the chemistry styles of pretty much the whole team to divert the stats where they are more needed rather than just div diverting them like, you, you're thinning them out, you know, by, as I said, by giving, like, anchor chemistry style to Wendell and Ricardo Pereira, two dudes that are super low on defending and physical, um, you're, you're, you're boosting them so minimally that it doesn't really make a difference, where if you give them a Sentinel or a Shadow, you're going to give them big boost, the maximum boost that they can get for those areas, and it will make them a lot better. Um, I mean, end of the day, I got two wins out of four in Division 1 with this team. And one of those losses was a narrow loss. And one of them was to an elite standard uh, foot champs player. So, on, you know, when, when you reflect on it like that, you know, if, you, if you're going to win five games out of ten in Division 1 on that kind of ratio, that's 15 points. That's enough to hold Division 1. So, in that sense, in that air... Yeah, you know, you could use this team. If you are looking for a cheap team that is going to carry you or hold you in divisions, this one might be worth using. But there are very, very many things missing in this team that I think a lot of people would hate. And if you're not a top player and you do rely on the, the abilities of your players more than you rely on the skill of yourself, 
you know, if you if you use players because they are actually OP, then this isn't the team for you. Because although this is called an OP team by the guy who created it, I would have to disagree. There are a lot of very underpowered, underusable, like they're, they're, you know, that don't fit the meta of this game. There's a lot of them in there. So sad that uh, we've got an, a bad team, in my opinion, not the best team in FIFA. Uh, in my opinion, I like to use good teams and show you guys where the good stuff is. But I also like to use teams like this and show you when they don't do great so that I can help you improve. Because, for example, the person that I took this team off, I might give him this feedback for this team. He might make a couple of changes. And if it already works for him, he might actually change this into a, a team that is just unbelievable for him by making one or two minor, minor, you know, minor swaps here or there with chem styles, with tactics, with instructions and with personnel. Um, but this, guys, is going to be the end of the video. If you did enjoy it, be sure to leave a like, rating, comment, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. But for now, guys, I'm out. Peace.